Hello, thank you so much for joining me today for Give Him 15. The title of today's post is The Cape Henry Assignment. The past four days, beginning Friday in Ohio, then to Virginia Beach and Cape Henry, and finally home late last night, Monday, have been a whirlwind for me, almost a blur. As I write this post today, Tuesday, I'm trying to process all that has taken place. The posts, of course, are all written and recorded the day before their release. And I want to begin by thanking the thousands of you who joined us in prayer during these significant four days. The time at Cape Henry on Monday morning was very strong and deeply moving. I was joined by Jay Comiskey and Greg Hood, standing on the shores where Robert Hunt and his fellow worshipers planted the cross in 1607, is always touches something deep in my heart. That day began a new chapter in Earth's history. God began his work of raising up a booming trumpet for the gospel of the kingdom the good news of Jesus Christ's redemption and rule. He announced his purpose for this nation, a nation that was still in seed form, and he recorded it in heaven and in earth. Hell and all those aligned with her have sought to silence this voice of spiritual and natural freedom. And though the voice is weak, at times barely a whisper, it remains. And America's voice is being healed and restored. I am reminded of Christ's words in Matthew 12, 20. A bent reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish until he leads justice to victory. The Great Passion Translation says, He won't brush aside the bruised and broken. He will be gentle with the weak until his victory releases justice. Jesus was quoting Isaiah 42.3, a prophetic reference to himself. His heart has not changed. He is still fanning the sparks of smoking wicks nursing wounded reeds. His mercy endures forever. As we stood on the shores of Cape Henry, agreeing with Holy Spirit's words through Robert Hunt, we knew we were blowing on the remaining spark of America's destiny and applying the healing oil of Christ to her wounded soul. We read from the dream where we were told to command the foreword, the foreword, and then did so, reading Hunt's prayer, dedication, declaration, and Psalm 22, 27 and 8, which he also quoted. We also commanded the foreword on the Liberty Bell, whose sound waves pierced the heavens on the day of America's formal birth. July 4th, 1776, proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants thereof, Leviticus 25.10. As I have stated in previous posts, this was a verse describing the year of Jubilee, an ordinance in Israel that forgave all debts and restored liberty to all, which was fulfilled by Christ, our Jubilee. America's destiny is to partner with Christ, proclaiming to all the world the freedom offered in him. We commanded the words of the Mayflower Compact, written in 1620, for the glory of God, these pilgrims said, for the glory of God and the advancements of the Christian faith. We commanded the words spoken by John Winthrop, on March 21st, 1630, describing us as a city on a hill, 
a phrase taken from Christ's very words in the Sermon on the Mount. No less than 14 U.S. presidents have quoted Winthrop and this verse in reference to America. We commanded from the Declaration of Independence. It's for references to God and an appeal to him for help. All of this at Cape Henry on Monday morning was laced with other scriptures, along with spontaneous prayers and decrees inspired by Holy Spirit. We honored those who have gone before us, and we honored our Lord Jesus Christ, taking communion there on this sacred ground. After partaking in communion, we performed a prophetic act, pouring juice and placing a piece of bread in the sand, declaring that the blood of Jesus is cleansing our land and returning us to our destiny. A memorial day, a memorable day indeed. But it wasn't over. I went back to Virginia Beach, the headquarters of CBN, Regent University, the 700 Club, and other international ministries founded by Pat Robertson in order to attend his memorial service. Hundreds of leaders from around the world were there to honor this great man. It was extraordinary, very moving, and conducted with true dignity and excellence. I was impacted by all that was said and done, but throughout the entire service, kept being reminded of how Pat Robertson, a descendant of Robert Hunt, had been used to literally fulfill Hunt's forward of 1607. Hundreds of millions of people around the world have heard the gospel through the 700 Club, with perhaps as many as a billion of them praying to receive Christ. The gospel has literally gone from there to the entire earth. It was incredibly moving and very humbling to be present the honoring and celebration of this great man's life and legacy. How appropriate that on this day, we had gone to the place where his calling actually began four centuries ago and commanded it into America once again. I'm sure couple of men in the cloud of witnesses, Hunt and Robertson, were smiling. We must now move this forward, forward, no pun intended. We must finish our assignment of seeing America healed and restored through a third great awakening. This voice of the gospel, America, must be strong in the days ahead. We, Christ's Ecclesia, have been commissioned to this cause. By God's grace, the authority of Christ, the help of Holy Spirit, we will not fail. In the words of the great hymn written by Martin Luther and was sung at Robertson's celebration service, a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he, amid the flood of mortal ills, prevailing. For still our ancient foe does seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great, armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing we not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. You ask who that may be? Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Saba oath his name, from age to age the same, he must win the battle. And though this world, with devils filled, should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph 
through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abideth. The spirit and the gifts are ours through him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also, the body they may kill. God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Pray with me. Father, our prayer today is that we would be found faithful, worthy of the legacy left to us by Christ and those gone before us. May the church of Jesus Christ find its voice in this nation once again, releasing that voice with the thunderous strength and power of Holy Spirit. Rend the heavens and come down. Display your awesome strength and glory. Heal and restore this land regardless of what it takes. We will not fear the shaking, for our kingdom cannot be shaken. Give us the strategies we need with which to fulfill our role and the wisdom to implement them with your understanding and counsel. The greater one, Holy Spirit, is in us. We will listen to him. And all this is for you, Father. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our decree today is, we decree that we, the ecclesia, will fulfill the purposes of God in our generation. We will. We will. Let's say it again. We decree that we, the ecclesia, will fulfill the purposes of God in our generation generation. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Thank you again for praying for and with us as we were there. Appreciate it so much. Look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.